Hey guys, welcome to episode five of Card Crunch's podcast uh, with myself, Pokerteen King. We got Mike, and our first guest is Poker Dean. So if you want to introduce yourself a little bit, what's up, people? Um, I'm Dean or Pokey Dean. I make Pokemon content on YouTube. Um, been collecting as a kid, but obviously when you grow up, you kind of get distracted and go into other things. So I got back in around. 2016 casually and then i say in the last two years i've been uh, collecting pretty seriously and uh been loving the journey so far it's, my wallet is maybe not agreeing with me but um it's been fun so uh let's just kick it off with the first question i'm curious as to how your journey started so i mean was base set your first set was that where you first got into it yeah, so I grew up with base set literally when Pokemon came out. I think I was well, I was I was young, um, but I do remember it. So I wasn't young enough to like kind of not remember. It. I remember going to like Woolworths, uh, which was a shop in if you're not from the UK, uh, which was like a legendary shop, uh, which unfortunately is not around anymore. But yeah, going in buying my packs for like two ninety nine, um, and then I say I probably stopped collecting around Neo. I don't really remember opening up neo english i remember opening up neo uh genesis like in japanese but um i think around that sort of time i stopped um so i would have collected base jungle fossil team rocket and then like a tiny bit of neo genesis um which was cool it, yeah that's really interesting i like so you had neo genesis japanese yeah i just i don't know how but i own i like i remember going through my binder and just seeing yeah. like a load of neo uh, japanese neo genesis but no english so i do remember (laughs) going to like markets um like at like local town car parks and picking up like i guess just packs from there but i do also have like a load of fake cards like i have like a (laughs) pikachu that's got like three thousand hp so that would have been op uh to play with back in the day but yeah there was a i you don't realize how much fakes well you, you see how much fakes there are now but as a kid you don't even realize like there was so many fakes going around back then as well just because i guess it was so popular and people are just always trying to make like money off it yeah i think um like when i got back into collecting pokemon i bought like a a small collection and i remember that you know the reverse hollows from legendary collection i remember them being fake so i chucked them (laughs) all out oh no Oh, I've, seen, I've seen the ones that are like gold they're like legendary collection but they're gold um so they are like massively fake but yeah everyone was, i remember loads of people being like oh, i've got these are these like really w- worth a lot i'm like yeah they're not, they're not <laughs> yeah they're not legit um so yeah. obviously that was when you well that was when pokemon first came out and, and the initial craze where yeah. where does it come in, into play where you start making content or you got back into it and got back into collecting was that before you made content or did it happen all at once uh yeah no good question i so i used to do uh i've been doing youtube for about probably eight years now um and i actually had a a previous channel with a friend um which was a fifa content channel uh, and kind of like real life stuff um which was really cool really cool really fun but then i kind of like got burnt out from doing FIFA. Um, the game was going in a direction that I wasn't really liking. It was going very competitively. Um, and me and my friend, we had like a joint channel. So like our content was based on like doing like really fun content. And the way the game was moving, it was just like kind of weaning that sort of stuff out. So I was kind of in like a spot where um, I didn't really know what to do. Um, and at the time we were going to like gaming events, like Insomnia in the UK. And they had just like stalls that would sell Pokemon products. And at the time, I remember, I can't remember which Insomnia it was, but they were selling um, generation collection boxes. So the Charizard, Blastoise, Venus. I didn't actually see the Pikachu one, but I was like, oh my God, I haven't seen Pokemon cards in ages. And obviously, like, I loved them. Uh, And it was 2016. So uh, there was Evolutions out at the time as well. So obviously, it was like the kind of reprint of base set. So... I started picking those up, just opening them for fun. And I would actually say the biggest thing that got me back into Pokemon was probably Pokemon Go. 2016, that summer was probably one of the best summers of all time. Literally just walking amazing, around. Yeah. yeah, literally walking around at like 3 a.m. trying to catch like a Blastoise um, and just seeing random people. So, yeah, I think it was like a combination of like picking up just a uh, product that kind of resembled 
base set for when I grew up with evolutions, playing Pokemon Go. Um, and I just was opening it for fun, but I wasn't thinking anything of it because I was kind of just playing, uh, still doing my FIFA stuff. Um, and then, like I said, kind of burnt out from FIFA. And I've always been passionate about Pokemon. I think 2021 or 2019, actually. Uh, yeah, 2019 I was kind of getting back into it a bit more with Unbroken Bonds and Hidden Fates because there was a yeah. massive craze for Hidden Fates um, yeah. yeah like picking up tins was like near impossible at one point um, so I was picking up those when I could just opening them for fun trying to pull the Charizard because Charizard was my favourite Pokemon um, and then I'd say I was probably just making content for a little bit of fun but not posting that often um, and obviously I was making a new channel from it and just kind of like be like ah eh. Um, but then I'd say 2021, I was like, do you know what? This is so much fun. I love this. I love the, the community is incredible, by the way. Like comparing it to like FIFA, um, so much, so positive and so many nice people and such generosity. So I was just like, this is awesome. And let me kind of like take it seriously and just make content as like much as I possibly can. Oh, nice. Yeah, that sounds so. So from that 2016 moment, it was just. You start collecting, fun. yeah, from that yeah. point, and it's. it's I, I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't like collecting, collecting. I was just kind of like opening. If there's yeah. something cool, oh, yeah. I would, I'd keep it. I wouldn't go out and buy a card or kind of like. I didn't actually do much research on like stuff because I remember like doing research on sets, getting back into it of ones that I'd love to collect. And um, funny enough, that's how I met like uh, my friend Chloe. Is I bought um, two sets off her. Um, just because I was just looking into like sets I'd never opened but were like really cool I wanted to collect. So how did that collaboration with Chloe start? Because obviously we know when we look on any of the social media platforms, we see both of you together um, yeah. making content. How did that that process start? Um, yeah, so like I said, um, I initially met Chloe through buying um two sets it was secret wonders from diamond and pearl era and uh supreme victors from platinum um i love those sets they're so fun i actually have a supreme victors box right here oh. um but yeah the way we met was through that and then we kind of got a chat in um she was just starting out content on youtube um and uh she invited me to uh, take part in a box break that she was doing i think i always forget i think it was fossil could have been jungle um so yeah met her through that we did that box break and then just through there we've been chatting uh we get on really well um and it's just always fun and funny moments with us two and and her husband um and yeah through that we just kept doing stuff um they would give me tips on stuff about pokemon any questions i had um, back in the day they kind of asked me some questions on like equipment and and stuff to do on youtube um, and i'd help out where i could with that and then yeah just from there we bought we kind of like um built a really fun and good friendship um and probably my like best friends in well best friends in life actually not just the community um we've we've gone on a lot of things like adventures together uh, we own a TCG store together now, um, and we also own like um, a, a number one trophy card, which is a lot of fun. A lot, of, yeah. very very cool card. That's a that's a really nice journey. I think sharing those moments with yeah people that you're close with kind of make it better. And as you said about the the community element. Um, yeah, so definitely. another question, sort of following on which you've mentioned about is how do you separate your collection in terms of like what's for the channel, what's for the store and sort of what's for your own personal collection? Yeah, um, I would say since doing it more full time and more kind of like um, business minded, uh, my personal collection has definitely taken a hit. I think in the last probably like two years, I've probably bought like two or three cards for my personal collection. Um, the most recent being a PSA 10. Um, Shining Mewtwo. I've always wanted a Shining Mewtwo and a Shining Charizard. Managed to pick one up in Orlando, um, which was actually kind of for, for content as well. But like, I've always, I saw her and I was like, do you know what? I haven't bought anything for myself in a while. Let me, um, let me purchase this. So yeah, yeah. It's, it, it's very difficult to separate because obviously with, with it being a business, um, you, you have this money that you say, right, do I spend this on me and I sit on a product or I sit on an item that is worth 
say a thousand pounds when realistically I could be spending that to better the business um so it's very yeah. difficult to kind of separate and I would say like uh, my personal coach has definitely taken a hit from it but um I guess we look at some things um where say we buy a big collection we'd probably buy it for the business either to move on or make content with or um maybe there's one item in there that we might keep for a personal collection or we need for a set or something um yeah and then maybe just go from there but i'll say most of the time um it's mainly for content or uh the business they probably take priority and then for me personally uh and uh, i guess for chloe too um the personal collection kind of takes like a back seat and then maybe once in a blue moon not even the trophy card actually that was um that was another personal purchase but that was more of a this is a once in a lifetime opportunity that's come about let's the skillet sort of thing so you kind of if there's something that's like you can't miss then you you kind of have to make that yeah. purchase now that it's more business focused and you've mm. you've dropped a little bit on the personal collection side does that has that changed how you feel about the hobby like i know sometimes when people take a hobby and yeah make a business out of it you, some some people lose that passion because it the way you think about it and the way you manage it is extremely different to them being that escape from maybe your full-time job. I assume you're full-time with it now. Yeah. At the moment. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. That's a really good question as well. Like um, I've seen a lot of people and, and maybe it was the same with me with FIFA. Obviously I grew up playing the game. Then I kind of made it a job and then I ended up hating it. Um, But no, um, that ha definitely hasn't happened in the case of me. If anything, it's kind of made me more passionate about it because I get to do things that if I was just collecting, I maybe wouldn't have been able to do. Um, for instance, I've owned like I I've owned a lot of vintage boxes. Um, I've been able to open a lot of vintage boxes, which I wouldn't have been able to do if I was just opening for myself personally. Um, so I think if anything, it's definitely, like I said, made me more passionate about it because I've been able to do trips, meet some incredible people, seen incredible cards, um, had a lot of incredible moments. And I think through it, um, it's only just making me appreciate one, the community, um, two, just like these incredible cards that you don't often get to see or hold or purchase or, or whatever. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, every, each year I'm loving it more and more and more, wanting to do more and more and more. And, um, I'm seeing cards that I genuinely didn't think I'd ever see, which is just awesome. Yeah, that's a great point. I guess I've never thought about it like that. Like you just you get to buy experience and see yeah. these, these items that you probably otherwise wouldn't be able to see. So yeah, I guess that yeah. just makes you so much more like excited and passionate for it. That just yeah, just mind definitely. those I those items are, are literally mind blowing, aren't they? Like you're like you're just in awe when you see that and it's yeah it's yeah. incredible that it's been able to lead you to those places that's amazing um i know some people don't always reveal some items that they have sometimes they have some like incredibly rare item that they don't disclose you don't have to reveal it if you have one but do you have any items in your personal collection that you've never sort of told anyone um... about well not anyone but just Online. yeah on like socials um i think I'm trying to think i i have a few charizards but they're nothing kind of like mind-blowing it's just like i've got like a gold star charizard i don't think i've posted that um yeah other than that the the number one trophy but i just don't i don't have that here yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, don't trust, <laughs> I don't trust myself with that but um it's also uh I've also posted about it, but yeah, yeah. yeah other I guess than that, I don't really have any cards that I haven't showcased yet. Yeah, I guess if you're content creating it, you would probably make content about something if it was like incredibly rare and expensive. It wouldn't make sense yeah. necessarily to well, keep it hidden. It also it also goes back to my point of like not being able to purchase anything for my personal collection just because yeah. it's the business stuff. So, um, in terms of personal collection, I have a few cards, but they're just like, like I said, like a PSA, uh, I think it's a seven gold star Charizard, the shining Mewtwo. I yeah. really want, I've got a Holy grail list. Um, and for me next, I really, my next itch, cause being able to open up vintage and stuff like that, like 
I, I get that itch of like, oh my god, I want to pull this. So my next itch is I really want to, I really want to pull a gold star. I've never pulled a gold star, so um, yeah. I want, I want a gold star Mew and a Char. Oh, no, I want a gold star Mew, and I want a gold star Mew too. They're like two next cards for my personal top collection. Top really so yeah. would you, would you buy them or would you open them hoping to pull it or both? Like you literally want to pull one and have one for yourself. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, in a realistic world, I'd love to pull one, but I, I mean, I don't think that. Yeah. I think by the time by the time I open as many packs, I probably would have been able to buy five. Um, so I'd probably buy I'd probably buy one if I came across one. But like, I would yeah. love to pull one. Absolutely love to pull one. So, what is your? You mentioned about your personal collection and sort of not being able to add much to it recently. What would you say is your favorite personal collection item that you have? <laughs> Um, I would say at the moment, other than the number one trophy, because that just has like a lot, like a cool story, like a lot of yeah. meaning to it. Um, I'd probably say, um, my Shadowless Charizard, um, because it was probably like my first big purchase. Charizard's okay. my favorite, fa Charizard's my favorite Pokemon. The base set Charizard is, um, my favorite artworks. It's like the most nostalgic. But um, probably that, and then probably um, now, it hasn't come back yet, is um, my base at Charizard that was signed by Mitsuhiro Rita. Um, I was very fortunate enough to meet him um, not too long ago, and yeah, I got him to sign one of my Charizard. So that is like never going to leave my collection. Um, That's a special just, item. Yeah, yeah, a special item. Like, I was first time meeting him, um, and it's just another moment of like a really cool weekend and it's just something that whenever i look at it i'll kind of like be reminded of that moment in time and it would be great to just have for my personal collection forever sorry going back slightly what was the cool story about the trophy cards can you go into that oh yeah um it was just kind of like how so london worlds was our first ever worlds uh, i've never been to a worlds before um and the fact that it was in london was just like amazing because Obviously, we're from the yeah. UK. Um, so we went to Wales, which was mind-blowing experience. Just like I've never seen an event that is just so like crazy about Pokemon, playing, the collecting, just everything. It had everything. Um, and then, yeah, we um, we just, we literally just m luckily stumbled upon um, someone who won who won the trophy uh, or won the, the the worlds and then through that we kind of just became friends and um the opportunity arose to to purchase it and we did and it was just like we kind of like it might you know with england with like football it's like it's coming home we kind of like yeah. brought the trophy home because it the winner was from um the czech republic oh, okay. so it was in it was in um Czech Republic so yeah. we kind of brought the trophy back to England where it belongs because it was London Worlds yeah that's quite so, a special moment um yeah I, so I only... remember Worlds being absolutely as you said mad to see so much Pokemon in such a com fine space fine. Oh, we losing we losing Jamie I think that's my good gun. A little oh, bit, it's fine. We, we can still hear you, so um, okay. it's just your cam. Your camera's frozen for me. I don't know. Yeah, oh, it's back. Yeah, I've just got both of you loading at the moment. Oh, you you're all good now. It's all good. Yeah, you okay. good. Um, but yeah, I remember Worlds being such a such a sort of uncomparable moment. I think that as well for like in terms of like UK collectors as well and obviously the the progression of like UK content creation for Pokemon mm. and TCGs. Um Worlds was definitely a big moment. Um do you think that now in twenty twenty three the um content creation for like UK Pokemon content creation has kind of hit a point where we've got quite a lot of representation there? yeah i think um i think the uk scene is growing massively and and um me and chloe started a podcast last year um that we um hope to maybe get more back into we've just been very busy recently that we were kind of trying to bridge the gap one of the aims for our podcast was trying to bridge the gap between the us and the uk because the us is massive you have some incredible and massive um content creators 
but also we kind of wanted to try and bring some of the US content creators that we know um, onto it so that maybe their audience would come across and see kind of what the UK has to offer and then like, uh, vice versa, kind of like if there was any UK audience that didn't know about the US audience would kind of just go over and check out for themselves because we felt like there was like a big gap between the two. Um, but I definitely think since since kind of like the boom um there's been a lot more uk um content cre creators emerging there's some really cool content um and like you said there's like a much bigger presence and probably world's helped out as well just because you probably would have had some people come there over to check it out um and hopefully it just gets bigger and bigger um because some really cool content creators out there that are doing their thing um and like i said if there's a point where we can all kind of like merge um regions together that would be insane yeah yeah, I think looking back, there was a, you were right, there was a huge gap there. But I think mm. what you, I think you and Chloe have done a, an amazing job at putting the UK like on, on there and, and Thank you. just making that gap more narrow. Uh, I think yeah. you guys have been to the US and been on some other people's channels in the US as well. So that's, I, I think when I saw that happen, it was like, oh, this is really amazing to see because it's kind of, yeah bridge that gap that was just seemed to always be there for some reason um yeah, so yeah I, I mean hats I off to you guys because yeah it's really it's really good to see that now thank you yeah it's, they're really the the us guys are really really nice people um very fortunate enough like like you said like rev was super awesome to meet him and um, we went over to his and recorded some content same with leon hart um we're going to card party uh next month in june um for deep pocket monster so that'll be a really cool event um and yeah just met some really really nice people there so that's another thing like i was saying with the pokemon community everyone's just so open-armed that it's just really really nice um just to kind of feel included in any way shape or form um so yeah like i really really love it um and hopefully there'll be more to come and just i hope the scene just gets bigger and bigger and bigger just because it's just so many incredible people the content's awesome there's so many cool stories to tell um and just stuff like that yeah, yeah obviously I, yeah. um That's sorry sorry go on jamie yeah I, I think what you just said really was you both what mike said both of you have done an absolutely fantastic job at um putting the uk kind of on the map really with content creation i think the US is such a large market and it kind of can feel like that's the start and end of Pokemon sometimes. But mm. when you sort of look at a lot of the content creators, there's so many now throughout Europe doing um, doing this kind of thing, as well as you going over to the US, it does definitely bridge that gap. And I'd say that, you know, the next couple of years is going to be really exciting. We're going to try to get as many people on this podcast as we can to kind of give their sort of their voice and opinions and stuff and yeah yeah it's it's great to see it as you said the community is yeah it's it's really lovely to kind of meet people within the community everyone's so positive and happy as well so yeah you're doing the cool thing as well of like just bridging different tcgs obviously i'm very much in content wise um pokemon based i do collect dragon ball cards but um i don't really make content on it but like the fact that you guys are just bring, bridging kind of all different TCGs, I know you dabble in other things. Um, so that's really cool. Uh, hats off to you guys. Thank you. Thanks, man. Um, yeah, so obviously I can see you've got a bit of a DBS in the background as well. Um, so yeah. you, do, you do collect it or have you not touched it in a while? Um, I, do, I do collect it. I mean, I absolutely degened um, the uh, Fighters Ambition set, which is the set just before the set that's just released because um my favorite uh character is gohan and he's got like a secret rare card in that oh, set and yeah. i opened like three cases which probably was <laughs> three cases too many but um i managed to pull it um so it's just literally just, i need to grade it but i have so many like if you could see i'll show you quickly hold on Ugh. it bulk. so i have i have like three of these of like cards to grade um so i have a lot of cards i need to grade and that's all just dragon ball oh, okay. um so but grading fees are just yeah i you can get carried away very easily um and then you get, you get the bill and you're like i literally was not expecting that yeah you, you're um, like i forgot i've even sent this like oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah 
<laughs> yeah, literally. Um, so yeah, I do collect it. Um, yeah. I've, I've, I haven't collected the latest set. I think at the moment, um, I w- I'll probably just go for like chase cards that I really like because I do have like from when it started, I've got a lot of the secret rares. I've bought a personal collection of someone, um, and he had a lot of Dragon Ball cards. But it's just so tough to just stay in two or multiple yeah. TCG. Yeah. Um, I I try and pick up a few. I always pronounce it wrong. Is it Y Schwartz? Yeah. Why Schwartz? Yeah. yeah. Why Schwartz? Well, um, it in <laughs> like some people pronounce it like Weiss because that's the it's it's a German word and I German. think that's the proper way to pronounce it. But I I always say Y Schwartz. Yeah. Why Schwartz? Because I tried saying it on stream and I said it so badly. <laughs> like people now take the mic that I say like we sports. Um, I've, so... I've heard that before. <laughs> yeah. So I like I love like Attack on Titan. Yeah. So I've got a few boxes of those. Um, I like the Marvel. I actually didn't pick any of those up, but I opened a bit. Um, so there's some of those really cool yeah, sets. Yeah. I I didn't even pick up Disney. That's just going crazy. The prices seem to just get a little bit wild. Um. But I really want them to do like a Demon Slayer. Like Demon Slayer would be sick. So I do watch anime. I like a lot of animes. So when I see that they do that kind of like collab, um, I, that it really excites me. Yeah, they yeah they don't they don't have any Demon Slayer. I think that's with no. Build Divide, which is a you know separate TCG. Um, but sometimes yeah. like they drop IPs and then Weiss Wolves gets yeah. the IP. So it, potentially it could come. It could happen. Yeah, yeah, it could happen. Yeah. Um, yeah recommend chainsaw man though if you like demon slayer chainsaw man although i've heard that is so good i haven't watched it yet yes as silly as the title sounds like it's amazing (laughs) like it sounds ridiculous but yeah it's amazing and they are they do they are getting a a set for that um there are actually loads of tcgs popping up at the moment and that is a mixture of like kickstarter tcgs and then like legit tcgs from the sense like disney are doing their own one and there's just so, yeah, there's so many popping up right now. Like, what do you think about that? It, does, does that tempt you to collect more or other TCGs, or do you think it's a bit like there's too many and and it's going to be an issue in a couple of years' time? I'm all for it to be fair, um, because if there's something you love out there and there's something you can collect, then I think you just have a more connection with it. The same, that's, that's exactly what, what it was with me for Pokemon. For instance, I grew up, the, the main thing that kind of drew me into Pokemon was I literally remember at school, my friend had a Game Boy, you know, the, the original one that's like uh, grey. Yeah. And he bought Pokemon Red. And I just literally sat there next to him watching it for about four hours. And then um, my nan put, uh, got me a Game Boy green colour, which got stolen, and Pokemon Red, which oh. got stolen as well when I was on holiday. Um, and then through that, I literally just... I lived in that world and then through the game I watched the TV show and then from the TV show I collected the cards so I feel like if any if any of those brands want to drop that sort of stuff especially as a kid it's just another way to connect with it and um yeah I'm I have no qualms about that um I do like some of those TCGs I don't know if um why Schwartz does it but is every set like playable because I know like the My Hero Academia I don't know who do- does that like you the the actual game itself you can have different ips but they all have the same sort of like um playing rules and stuff like that so i like that idea where you can kind of pick up your favorite tcg for for a game and then say my hero academia versus i I don't know just for example demon slayer like you can kind of have that sort of thing i think that would be i think that's really cool to be fair yeah that Um, is especially with so many that is literally what White Shores is. Like, you can yeah. play, like, Attack on Titan versus, you know, like a... a another... Man. Yeah, yeah, like, that yeah, is just... Yeah, that's you, sick. I like that. You pick your... Well, obviously, some sets are going to have different playability, and some will have an advantage, but you do get people, like, picking up, like, a weaker set, perhaps because it's their favourite show, and they yeah. play it and against another one, despite it being weaker, and they, you know, sometimes they win because it's, you know, it's it. just is what it is. But yeah, from the playability side, like I, I really don't have that much knowledge. I've I've not played at all. Um, yeah, I tried to play Pokemon once, and it really changes the way I looked at the cards. And I, I just realised like it's not for me. Like I prefer collecting. Do you, do you play a bit of Pokemon? Yeah, I I love playing it. Um, it's just time for me yeah. so obviously um euic was two or three weeks ago now which is um 
the European Championships, they they get held. I don't know how many they do a year, but basically it's a way to get points to go to Worlds um, for players. Um, and it's like a big regional, basically. So they do like regionals throughout the year. And then they have a few um, international cups and EUIC is one of them. And um, for some stupid reason, I decided to enter, seeing I, I had no competitive background prior or experience. I just thought it's in London. Let me join and see what happens. So um, I joined. Um, you pay sixty pound, but you get a sick plate mat. So like straight off the rip, I was like, do you know what? This is this is worth the sixty pound. I could I could go in and lose every game. Um, and then I my first ever opponent was a a, a girl called Piper Lapine from the US. And she has won two regionals this year. And I literally didn't know. And I was like, so are you trying to like qualify for Worlds? And she was like, no, nah, I've already got my invite. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, and then she continued to destroy me in that match. She, she literally wiped me off the floor. Um, but it was so much fun. The one thing I would say is through doing that is it, I, won, I won one game. Um, out of nine rounds and it was 8 a.m start and 9 p.m finish with 30 minutes um for lunch literally oh, i have nothing but respect for the players it is mentally exhausting like genuinely having to play those many games like you have to be like mentally just so prepared and and kind of your stamina has to be up there because it's so easy to misplay because when you play on the game um and if anyone is trying to play pokemon tcg i highly recommend downloading uh, Pokemon TCG Live. It's free and it's just really good to way of playing. But it's so much different playing in person because it's so much easier to misplay. Um, but yeah, no, it's just another way for me. Like, not only do I really enjoy playing the game, you meet some incredible people. Like I, I was very fortunate enough that every uh, opponent I played could speak really good English. There was a guy from Denmark. There was a, a person from France. There was a person from America who'd been playing for like years and years and years and like you just get chatting and and it's just really, really fun. Um, so if there's anyone out there who's always thought about playing, definitely go to a local card shop, sign up for a pre-release event. Everyone's on the same playing level um, and you get some cool cards at the end of it too. Those build and battle kits seem to be juiced. I don't know what it is. Every pre-release yeah. I've gone, people just pull crazy, crazy cards. Um, so yeah, I do love playing the game. I just, it's the hard thing for me is just the time because if you want to get really, really good, you have to put a lot of time into it. And I just don't have that. Um, but I do love playing it. It's so fun. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm I, hoping to do my first pre-release event at the end of the month. Yeah. How or, they evolve. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my friend has basically told me that I have no choice. So I'm going <laughs> to. I'm going to do it before work because it's actually around the corner from me as well. I oh, don't sick. really have an excuse. It's it's literally five minute walk from <laughs> me where they do mine. So, um, but those pre-release kits are. I've got them during like lockdowns and stuff when uh, they weren't doing them, but you could do them at home. I was still buying them. Yeah. Um, and I would open it, and they are absolutely stacked compared to. Yeah, I don't know, like the first print or something, but they just seem to just every like they just seem a good. Card. I see apart from mine. Whenever I've played in the pre-release kits, like six people next to me are like, oh my God, gold, secret rare, like all art. And I'm there like, oh, sweet, hollow. Yeah, cheers. So that, That's I me can... and Mike, honestly. Me yeah, next to Mike. Up. I'll pull the good stuff and he's just... I just get nothing for everything. <laughs> Every TCC. Yeah, I'm, I'm yet to be that person at a pre-release event. So hopefully next one. Maybe, yeah, hopefully, yeah. <laughs> so... um. I'm curious as to what you think is the most overrated set in Pokemon. Oh, that is an on the spot question. Over, <laughs> over, overrated, overrated of all time, or like in recent years? Recent years, probably. Uh, do you know what? I have such a personal attachment to Sword and Shield because, um, like. I've had so much fun during this yeah. or during the previous era, like from start to finish. We all know Rebel Clash is just not up there. Um, but overrated. Well, everyone says that's good, that it just really isn't. Yeah. Um, oh, I don't know, man. I just love. <laughs> you just love it all. <laughs> I love all the sets. Um, maybe, yeah, maybe the pool rates are rubbish, so you don't enjoy it as much. I can give you an underrated set that yeah, I think is super underrated. Yeah, let's go for underrated. 
Stay positive. For me, yeah. For me, I'm gonna go with Fusion Strike, just because <laughs> it's very hard to pull right to get the good cards. But they there's the Muse, which maybe I'm being a little bit biased because Muse is my, my second favorite Pokemon. But there's the 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 Cele no is it Celebi Fusion Strike or is that Chin Rain? But either if it is or isn't, there's the Espeon, which yeah. is beautiful and just in general for a set if you're collecting a set every artwork for the un uncommons and commons from that set are stunning like genuinely if you open up a pack you're like damn these cards look really good so um in terms of like collectability for a master set if you want one that like just looks really good i'm definitely going to throw in fusion strike just because i think the artwork in that set is incredible there's some beautiful cards too with the um breakdancing genesect You've got the um, the Espeon again, which is I've never pulled. I've only I've only seen it because someone graded through me, yeah. um, but I've never pulled that. And obviously, Muse. You've got the Muse, which are really nice. The Rainbow Rare Mew is the best Rainbow Rare V Max in Sword and Shield era period. It's going to look like we've paid you because literally our last episode we say Fusion Strike is underrated and it's it really be a great <laughs> set to invest in because it's so cheap. <laughs> Yeah, no, genuinely. Like, well, obviously, there's now that drama of um, yeah. all those cards coming out. Yeah. Um, so the, yeah, the prices so... have, have dipped, like because Dip. of that, and mm. and even the set you can pretty much get at retail. So it's like yeah, like you said as well, Mew and the other Pokemon staple in it is Gen Gengar, and that's like two big Gen Gengar. One. Gengar. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, we both rate we we both really highly rate Fusion Strike as well um yeah do you you have a hot take look? a hot take yeah we we like um, to give our hot takes at towards the end of an episode and uh yeah yes yeah, your turn are now. you gonna get are you gonna i want to hear your ones if you've got new ones or ones you've said previously but um hot take i, I literally am the most laid-back person in life so i don't i never like hold anything of like oh they should do this but maybe one thing that does kind of spoil it for me i guess is i don't like that japanese sets get released before the english sets just because it sort of ruins it for me in the sense of surprise because you know what's yeah. coming um so if they are, i think the only time they did that was celebrations right we got that before japan i think um so that was really cool seeing those cards like before knowing that they all exist sort of thing because there's some cards you might, might might miss but like for instance 151 set that's coming out seen all the e ex cards that are coming out now um yeah. and they're slowly kind of releasing the um the illustrator cards and stuff like that so um yeah i i'd say that have you guys seen the new um charizard oh, ex card yeah. the gold is card it, is it confirms that that's actually real i don't, I, I, I don't know yeah. it's it french real, yeah. but that is charles was my favorite pokemon and i i a goal of mine would be to complete uh have every charles but that is probably gonna be too expensive but i mean that one is interesting i'm just gonna say i do like it but at the same time i'm thinking that looks a little bit different to uh what i'm used to seeing but it's cool i assume you you preferred the non-gold charizard artwork that that got leaked yeah yeah that one looks cool i couldn't work out if that was for that set or for the 151 set you're talking about the one where it's like kind of flying and like it's looking. sideways yeah. yeah 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 i think that's for the 151 set um yeah but not, yeah i prefer that one not a fan of the uh the gold one like i feel like i'd be really surprised if it's real but maybe it is <laughs> uh, <laughs> I Today. feel like I only like it because I have to, because Charizard's yeah. my favourite Pokemon. <laughs> maybe maybe if I didn't like Charizard, I wouldn't, but it, yeah, I'll probably pick it up. But um, what do you guys think? Do you do you like the Japanese sets releasing before, or what's your what's your take on it? Uh, so we actually we did actually briefly kind of mention this in the last video as well, and I said that my hot take was um, in an episode before was about. Japanese modern being sort of very expensive, especially like we've seen Clay Burst as well, uh, you yeah. know, a couple of hundred pound a box now. I said that if the gap between Japanese and English releases was smaller, it would, it would one, it would kind of help with 
not everything being spoilt as much um but also it would also help with prices as well i think people would be mm. less inclined to go mad spending hundreds on a box at retail for japanese if they knew that in a week's time or two weeks time the english release would be out for instance that's a fair shout what like just curious why do we think that that still happens like realistically they could release at the same time couldn't they so it feels like specifically they they have that do it on purpose yeah i, I just can't I think know. why where that maybe is. maybe they want japan to have exclusive the exclusive first drop maybe i don't know honestly it's only a question that pokemon though i guess um let's get them on but yeah just yeah just <laughs> just for, just for <laughs> yeah we've got the ceo um <laughs> just just for personal preference uh it just would help like i said even with the price stuff i think that's a fair shout maybe there's any english uh or people who like collecting japanese but maybe english more they will go oh do you know what i'll i'll just wait a week and get the english print um so yeah no idea no yeah, idea cause... but it, that that's one thing i would change yeah yeah no i agree I, I think it's a very good point because in this day and age everything is about the new latest set craze hype and i think if they were in sync with each other then you would have all of that hype and excitement at the same time and it doesn't detract away from english sets because people have already gone and bought japanese and yeah, yeah. i don't think yep. i don't think it helps the, the other thing i was going to say is that um i don't now now they're all coming out i was gonna say i don't like um that say scarlet and violet drops by the time scarlet and violet drops we already know what's coming out in the like set after the set which yeah. i feel like that ruins the hype for the set that's dropping because people are always looking out for what's coming next before the the actual set has dropped so i feel like i don't know it just feels like scarlet and violet is a really fun set to open right we've got the silver borders these new illustration cards um and they're very they're, like they're really fun to open just because most of the packs pretty juiced you, you got a good chance of hitting something great with the um the subset of the the uh illustration cards but i feel like people are just already looking out for like the next set obviously we've just seen a new dark charizard coming which is even coming out in Paldea evolved it's probably going to be the next set so it's like i feel like we now live in a world where everything is so rushed like we need to we need to know the next thing before the things even out and then you kind of lose interest in that thing when we haven't got it yet so yeah i don't know i just growing up as a kid i remember like loving base set for like three years mate <laughs> it feels like maybe it wasn't i don't know obviously you can't really tell but like it's just i feel like everything's so rushed at the moment um of like getting getting the next thing when you don't even have time to appreciate the current thing Yes. Yeah, maybe that's Pokemon, maybe that's something else as well. Maybe that's other sets included. I don't know. Yeah, it would it would be nice if they could if they could just do those releases at the same time. But um you know, we can only hope for that. And but yeah, with English especially it would it would help. Um I know I've only got sort of one more question left. Uh obviously Jamie, if you've got more, feel free to follow up after this. Um but I just wanted to know what you think well, what personally to you is the biggest challenge about making content and doing what you do what's the biggest challenge you face um for me i love opening packs and i i love making content around opening sets however especially at the beginning and especially i would say to anyone that is thinking about making content whether it's pokemon digimon dragon ball whatever that it can get really expensive very quickly um and that's one of the challenges is is there's a lot of things I want to do. I would love to rip open a base set box, but you literally, unless you're like really big on YouTube, uh, it's going to be very hard to recoup that money. So you kind of have to be a bit smart with how you use your money when it comes to content creation. Um, so for me, there's lots of things I would love to do, but it comes down to financial because Pokemon and many other TCGs, they're not cheap. Um, no. So yeah i guess that's my biggest challenge is is working out how to make content that i want to make but also what what i can make um because like i said i can't i can't go opening up vintage packs for myself every week just because i know it would do well i know it'll be really fun i know people would love to see it but then at the same time i'd i'd be i'd have to 
quit my channel after a month um so yeah that's probably the biggest challenge i face at the moment um and then i guess that recently is being consistent just because i'm very fortunate enough to be going um doing a lot of traveling at the moment so um it's i'm trying to find a balance of being able to do that stuff and then also continuous continuously and um constantly uploading consistently a lot of season there but um yeah, that's they're the problems I probably uh or the challenges I'm facing at the moment. Juggling quite a bit then, really. <laughs> do you? Um, <laughs> yeah. Obviously, because you open packs as part of streams and things like that, does that give you a bit of the hit? I know it's a bit different because you're not, they're not for you. It's not like. Yeah. You're opening. Um, def definitely, like that is that is for me where I get a lot of enjoyment. Um. But not only just because I get to open the packs, it's more like I get to open the packs with people on stream rather than I get to open the pack for myself just sitting here, you know? Yeah. Like, I'll be like, oh, sweet, I got this. But like when I when I open packs for people, we've got a whole community, people watching and like wishing everyone good luck and like manifesting it. And then when we hit something, it's like everyone just goes wild. And like, it's just so, such a better thing. I'd rather that than the card be for me. Then I'd rather pull someone a card that they've really wanted for ages like for instance i had someone on um or i have someone on my channel that loved music, uh, fusion strike and they really wanted to pull a mu card unfortunately i wasn't able to pull it for her but um like we would just keep going and going and going and trying to pull it and then like if we pulled it it would have been incredible um unfortunately we weren't able to do it. i think she ended up buying the card but um just it's it's those sort of moments where I am fortunate enough that I get to open the packs, especially yeah. when it comes to vintage and stuff like that. But um, it's great to see everyone's reaction rather than just like sitting by myself in a room opening up a pack, um, which would be great because I get to keep it. But um, <laughs> it's it's a nice little trade off, I'd, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, I think um, that I completely agree with that one. I think only recently me and Mike both had one of those mystery packs from your stream. Oh yeah, and that was. I mean, I, I was home at the time, back home with my family, and I was sitting there on the sofa with my, my brother as well, who's sort of quite a rare of Pokemon and everything like that. Um, and he, he used to watch your uh, FIFA content. Oh, yeah. So he came in. I was like, oh, yeah, Mike bought a pack. And I was like, oh, I'll get a pack. <laughs> and it was kind of a, you know, I, we were both watching it, and my mum was standing in the doorway watching it because she was intrigued. But, like, that that is for me like what it's all about it's that community content that everyone's sort of egging each other on it's yeah you know, it's it's fun opening packs on your own as you said it gets expensive i've i've steered away from doing as many openings now because most of it was flesh and blood and everything's becoming quite expensive now so it's hard to justify opening up boxes when you know it's your money at the end of the day um, yeah 100 percent. but opening for other people and seeing seeing people's reactions getting cards people want you know that journey with that uh girl that wanted the mew Th those kind of things are really what this is all about 100 um, percent. i i would implore anybody really to sort of get involved and try to make some content um it's a it's a fun journey for sure and you know my journey's been made a lot better by the community being able to engage with people me and mike will sort of bounce off each other with a lot of ideas um as I'm sure you and Chloe do as well. Yeah. So that that kind of sort of process is really what makes it, it adds it's another layer to Definitely. the hobby that makes it a lot more fun. Hundred percent, hundred percent, so much fun. Um, and firstly, thank you for purchasing the mystery packs. That was a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, like you said, having people to bounce off of. Um, even like in my discord i say like is there any like is there anything you guys would like to see and then if people just start like chiming in with ideas and and then people just start interacting with each other that's the that's the goal for me it's like i want to i want to build a community around my channel where like i don't have to be the person to start something if that makes sense i just want people to kind of like interact with within each other and then i can jump in or if there's something i want to talk about then people come in like it's kind of like a self breathing ecosystem or community um which will be great because like i said I, i've met some incredible people you guys are awesome i had the pleasure of seeing you in person finally like that that's the other thing is when you get to see i'm terrible with names as it is but when you get to see someone who is in your stream 
in person and they're like oh i'm so and so you're like oh my god like we've in person they look like a stranger but you have so, such many moments and memories with that person online that it's like oh my god like it's sick um so yeah uh, this the community is so much fun and like you said them being a part of it makes adds another layer and makes it so much more fun definitely yeah i agree right so i, I think we're there unless you've got any other questions jamie I think we're good, yeah. I think yeah, so we... I just want to say a massive thank you for coming on, spending your time chatting with us. Thank um, you for having obviously, me. Obviously, <laughs> some of our viewers are other based on other TCGs, Wash Falls, Flesh and Blood. So if you don't know Pokey Dean, we've put his link in the description. Go check him out. And of course, we're on Spotify as well, uh, the Card Crunches podcast. So go give us a follow if you're not following on there. And thanks for watching as always. Bye. See you later, guys.